Hey everyone, this is Steve from simplygfx.org and today I'll be sharing some of my favourite methods that I use to make black and white images really pop. Now this video will be a nice and simple video demonstrating some adjustments and other effects to make your black and white images more dramatic. Now you can see I've already opened up this picture of a homeless man. Well, let's not judge him, he could not be homeless. Um, but you can see it's still in colour, so what we can do is go into Image Adjustment and click Desaturate. And this is going to take all the colour out of your image and make it black and white. Now the first step we can do to make it more dramatic, there are two ways to do this. The first way is to duplicate your background. And once it's duplicated, you want to set the background copy on overlay and set the opacity to around 50%. And you can see this just makes it a bit darker. Second way is to get a new adjustment layer and pick a gradient map. Now obviously we don't want this gradient, we're going to pick a black to white gradient. And same thing as before, we're going to be setting it on overlay. And reduce opacity to around 50% so it's not so dark and creepy. You can see either way is fine, it's just up to your preference really. So now what we can do is add some adjustment layers to correct our lighting and contrast. And you can get a curves adjustment layer, a brightness slash contrast, or exposure layer. And if we start with exposure, you can, you can change these settings to get that really nice intense lighting. I've upped my exposure by nearly 0.9. And offset I haven't changed much, I've just changed it to negative 0.004. And my gamma correction, you can see, oh that looks nice. Um, I've just changed that to 0.98. And you can see now that really does make a bit of a difference. And to really intensify that image up, we're going to add another layer and this is going to be a brightness and contrast. Now I'm going to increase my brightness and contrast. Brightness by 40 and contrast by 55. Now you can see we're really getting that dramatic black and white effect. And now what we're going to do is make a new layer. And you're going to go into image, apply image, which merges with the layers together and get your dodge tool. And I'm going to pick a 400 pixel soft brush and start brushing over the image and I'm just brushing over his face features and just the side of a hoodie and I'm going to get my burn tool and burn the lower points of the image using a 1500 pixel soft brush as well and this is just going to create that really nice contrast in the image so you have your brighter and your darker points and the next thing I want to do is get my paintbrush tool make a new layer and it's going to be a 500 pixel soft brush this time and using white I'm going to be painting over the bits I just dodged and this bit's pretty optional you don't have to do this if your image already has that nice layer nice brightness like nice contrast but I'm just doing it to make sure that I still have that nice brightness and everything and I'm setting it to um, 9% and you're just gonna you're just gonna leave it on normal and then I'm going to get my eraser, um, size will be around 150 and just erasing over the points that I kind of uh, messed up and just erasing so it doesn't look like an outer glow of the guy and now I'm going to get my paintbrush again, um, same size, um, 500 pixel and I'm going to get a black this time and like I did before I'm just going over the areas that I burned, um, you know just shadows and his beard, the side of his hoodie, his chest hairs, all, all of that stuff. It's pretty obvious we are going to burn and dodge. And I'm going to lower opacity to around 12%. And now you can see it does make a slight image. And now the very last thing we're going to do to finish up is make a new layer, image, apply image. And we're going to give this photo a bit of a sharpen now. If you click filter and go into sharpen, I'm going to go back again and get sharpened more because I need a bit more. And this step is just going to give you that really nice high quality photo after you spend some time editing it. And I always like to do this just to make sure um, it's HD. 
but don't over sharpen because that can look really bad. So yeah, this is it. This is the finished result. Hopefully you found this tutorial easy to follow. Remember, if you enjoyed this tutorial, like, share and favourite. If you want to see a specific tutorial being done, send me a message through YouTube or you can leave a comment below this video and I'll try and get back to you. If you haven't seen my other Photoshop tutorials yet, feel free to. Hint, hint. So have a good day and I'll see you next time.